you know, you hear about it every now and then, but uh, it's not every day you hear about somebody, you know, threatening female workers, especially, yeah. you know, those folks that are out there trying to help after after a hurricane. Yeah. But uh, that's exactly what happened recently in North Carolina um, following Hurricane Helene. And uh, this whole thing, this incident where this man was arrested for a, allegedly threatening these aid workers, it it really um, it makes you wonder what what could lead somebody to to lash out at these people who are trying to help. Yeah. It's, it's a head scratcher for sure. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we dug into this a little bit, and it turns out that uh, this situation is sadly just one example of uh, a much bigger problem, <laughs> you know. Uh, so today on the show, let's um, let's dive into this specific incident, uh, you know, the arrest, what, what FEMA is saying, and what it all kind of means in the context of, you know, safety concerns and the very real dangers of misinformation, especially during emergencies. So um, here's what we know. Okay, so... 44-year-old William Jacob Parsons from Bostick, North Carolina. Uh, he was taken into custody near Lake Lure. Okay. Um, and he was allegedly making threats against FEMA workers who yeah. were there, you know, doing their thing in the in the aftermath of Hurricane Helene. Right. Um, and to make matters even more intense, uh, Parsons, he had both a handgun and a rifle on him at the time. Oh, wow. So, you know... That's that. It, yeah, it's a little little. Look, that, that ups the ante. That ups the ante for sure. A little intense. For sure. Um, and 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 what's interesting about this is that the charge against him is is quite specific, uh, going armed to the terror of the public. Right. So you know, I I'm not a legal expert. I don't know all the ins and outs of the nuances of all these you know legal terms. Right. But um, I I would say that that goes that goes a bit beyond um simply possessing firearms. Yeah, it seems like it it definitely implies intent. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, to intimidate, um, cause fear, which, you know, again, adds that whole other layer to this whole thing. Yeah. It makes you wonder, you know, what was his motivation here? Right. Exactly. Was this, was this truly directed at FEMA or was there something else driving his actions? Right. Um, thankfully it seems like nobody was hurt. Okay, good. Um, Parsons was released on bond. Okay. Um, and investigators, they believe that he acted alone. Okay. But uh, but it definitely raises some eyebrows. You know what I mean? It raises concerns. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, this incident has led to some very real consequences. Okay. Um, you know, we don't know for sure, but it seems likely that in response to, to this uh, and, and potentially other security concerns, FEMA announced that they'd be making what they called operational adjustments. To ensure the safety of their workers. Yeah, I saw that statement, and I don't know that phrase "operational adjustments" really stuck out to me. Right. You know, it, it felt it felt intentionally vague. A little bit, yeah. You know, I mean, it could mean anything. It could mean, you know, hey, we're going to have more security. Right. You know, uh, it could be shifts in how and where they distribute aid. Yeah. The bigger question is, what impact might these adjustments have on? You know the very people that desperately need this aid. Yeah, that's the that's the tough part. You know, could it slow down these relief efforts? Yeah. Could it make it harder for people to to access this help? Right. It's a tough it's a tough thing to balance. You know, we got to make sure that the aid workers are safe. Right. But we also have to make sure that the people who need help can get that help. Absolutely. And to make things even more complex, um, Governor Cooper he issued a statement uh, highlighting what he called. Um, significant misinformation and threats to response workers yeah. that have been circulating since the hurricane hit. Really? So, you know, it's just it's this perfect storm of of awful things coming together. It is. And this is where I think this incident um, becomes a, you know, just a small piece of a, a much larger and frankly, more concerning puzzle. Right. Um, and that's this whole misinformation problem. Yeah. You know, particularly during emergencies, right. misinformation can be incredibly damaging. Yeah. I mean, it just sows confusion, erodes the public's trust in legitimate authorities. Yeah. And as, as we've seen here in this case, it can even lead to, you know, fear and violence. Sadly, yeah. And, and ultimately, it hinders the very relief efforts designed to help people. It's like a domino effect. It just keeps going. Exactly. And, and unfortunately, we've we've seen this play out in the past. I mean, you know, you remember when that earthquake hit Haiti back in 2010? Oh, yeah. And all those rumors were spreading that the aid trucks were full of stolen goods. Yeah. And it led to these attacks on aid convoys. Right. And and all of that just delayed vital supplies from reaching the people who needed them the most. Yeah. It's, it's just a horrible situation. Yeah. And it's a stark reminder of of 
the very real danger of misinformation. Absolutely. Especially during these crises when, when things are so fragile. Right. It makes you think, you know, what can we as individuals yeah. do? Like, yeah. how can we be more discerning about the information that we're taking in, that we're sharing with other people, especially, you know, in times of crisis? That's that's the million dollar question. And, and I think it boils down to this. Mm -hmm. We all need to be more critical thinkers. Yeah. You know, really, really look at where you're getting your information from. Absolutely. Is it is it coming from a a reliable news organization? Is it coming from a government agency? Yeah. Is it a trusted expert? Right. Or is it just, you know, some random person on social media? Right. You know, be wary of, of sensationalized headlines. Um, anything that's trying to, to elicit this this really strong emotional response from you. Right. Those are those are often red flags. Yeah. It's a good reminder for all of us, you know. We all have a part to play in preventing the spread of misinformation, especially, you know, like you said, when when lives are at stake. Right. It's not just about being informed, it's about being informed responsibly. Absolutely. You know, and I think that's that's something that we can all we can all get behind, right? That's so, yeah. So, you know, as we're as we're scrolling through our feeds and and we see this information, you know, Think twice before you hit that share button. Absolutely. Make sure that you know you're not contributing to the problem. Right. And uh, and you know hopefully together we can we can help to make the world a little bit a little bit better informed. I hope so. I think so. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this deep dive. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. I hope everybody out there has a great rest of your day, and uh, stay safe out there. We'll see you next time.